let's fix that. Yeah, I'm running it in DOSBox. I think it may need me to reset uh, OBS. There we go. Okay, but as I said before, it has some artifact issues where the dialogue windows aren't popping up. I'll see it on my screen, but on the chat, on the, on the, what I'm looking on the screen isn't showing up. So let's fit this. Is... Okay. Let's see here. This is the biggest indicator. Okay. It seems to be popping up fine. No, it's not. It's kind of weird looking. Alright. Here's Police Quest. <laughs> Here's hoping this works. Let's uh, increase the cycle count a bit. I don't think I really need to, but that's fine. Let's, let's see what happens. Take key. Okay, the window's popping up. That's good. That's a good sign. Oh, let's first look. Good old Lucky Lou. Alright. Uh, now that I've done that, let me actually make a slight change to this. Alright, is the chat window thing... Okay, hopefully it looks okay, but... One problem is that it might over chat overlook the chat box, so uh, let's just do a little testy test here. I can't see if that actually is readable or not. <laughs> oh, that might get overridden by the white. Yeah, that's going to get totally overridden. Uh, actually, let's uh, see if we can... Shove that there. There we go. Put it right up there. How's that? Okay. So, around the hallway is a keyboard. A table holding radio extenders, a photograph on the far wall, and a bar barred window to the evidence room. Take radio. You pick up a squelchy, noisy but workable extender. Alright, so now I've got both items. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, I do remember walking up to each person and hearing their comments. Do you know the best thing about this sh shower, Sonny? It's free. Too bad you have to work, Sonny, says Fudley. I'm 10-10. It's beer time for me. Alright, well... Say, Sonny, you know the difference between the oral and rectal thermometer? By the taste. Ugh. Well, see you later. I'm late for, my, for a date to raise my caffeine level. Boy, what a hangover I have. I should have left the blue room earlier last night. Can you believe that, Morris Fudley? Every day he showers here because he's too cheap to shower at home. Hey, if it's free, I do it too. All right, let's open our locker. And hopefully this pops up right. There we go. Look in the locker. You store your personal gear in your locker. Oh, wow. Thank you for the cheer, <laughs> Manitaris. I really appreciate it. Uh, you see your weapon in your gun belt. There is a speed loader of ammunition on the shelf. Your briefcase rests on the bottom of the locker. The keys to your Corvette are hanging on your hook. The towel is neatly folded in the bottom of the locker. Your civilian clothes are hanging on a law hanger. An old t-shirt and a pair of jeans hanger. Alright, so take gun. The policeman's tool belt. Don't leave home without it. Uh, do let me know, though, if it's not popping up on the... Um, like, if, if I'm saying something and you're not seeing it on screen, please let me know because I, 
I'm pretty sure the other times I've tried running this, it doesn't work. They're not, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. Shit. You take the speed loader with six rounds of 357 Magnum hollow point silver jacketed bullets. I have tried figuring out. I've been trying to figure out how to get this to work. And, um... Hmm. That's a little disappointing. Huh, maybe I should try doing this... Because I'm doing this as game capture. Maybe I should try it as a window capture. Uh, maybe... Because I, I, I don't want it to... I, I don't want to spoil this experience. Because I really love... I haven't played this game in like 15 to 20 years maybe. Or maybe even longer. And I want to... I want to experience it again. But I don't want to like have it messed up by... The briefcase contains many items you'll need in the field. Maybe if I just do it slowly, like uh, open case. Oops. See, that doesn't that doesn't show right. I can see it right now. Hmm. All right. Let's go back to the editor here. Uh, let's bring up the window capture. Okay, that says what's a cast, because I misspelled case, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> uh, see, this is really disappointing. I really want to play this. And I'm pretty sure it's because I don't know the proper way to run OBS, which... Pyh. Maybe I should decrease the cycle count. Maybe that could be it. Let's try decreasing the cycle count. Put it back to 3,000. And now it brings up like a delay there. Alright. Open. Case. Look. Your briefcase contains your, a pen, a notebook, and your official LPD ticket book. Take. Ticket book. What's a ticket book? Take. Ticket. You don't need it. <laughs> Take book. Hmm. Which book? Hmm. Again, window's not popping up. I'm really not. Take notebook. You take the notebook. Take ticket book. You take your pinch book from your briefcase. Hmm. You see that? When I uh, press enter, it's gone on my screen, but you can see part of the window. Like, it's still showing up on my end, like, on the preview page. Part of the chat window is still there. So I don't know what kind of artifacting this is due to. Like, I don't know why it's causing this. It's weird. That's why I've been so hesitant to play this. This pen was a high school gift, graduation gift. Okay, close case. Alright, close locker. Uh, there's a good chance I missed the meeting, and it will be a game over. But, maybe it'll work. Oh, the paper's gone. It's too late. Meeting's over. Oh no, there you go. <laughs> here, you, here you are for the 1300 hour briefing and it's 1315. Once again, you spend too much time goofing off. Game over. <laughs> all right so i think i'm going to see if i can do this in a window capture uh but or should i try display capture why not i'll try display capture let's see should i try display capture and see if this does anything differently there we go This is like really big. <laughs> this is such a large window. I wonder though if I do get the slave uh, artifact errors. 
I mean, another problem I had I noticed was that the menu screen was like really screwed up. It wasn't. It was a huge delay. But this seems to be working. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try it with the window. And if if it is the window, I'll uh, close DOSBox and I'll start it off on like full screen and see how it goes. Take key. Okay, the key pop up seemed to have come up. Take radio. Honestly, I'm not even looking at my main screen. I'm looking at the preview screen on OBS to follow what's going on. <laughs> All right. I've already done the dialogue with them, so let's... This is real quality stream work right here. Quality Twitch streamer here. Can't figure out how to play a game, so he plays in a full effing window. Oh, by the way, there's my recycle bin. <laughs> <laughs> take gun okay that popped up take bullet okay that came up take case oops that came up so maybe it is the window that will work all right so uh what is it alt enter to go full screen oof that is not a good idea let's go back whoa okay for a second there, I thought it worked. I've also activated my... I alt-entered. I, uh... <laughs> I pressed alt-enter, and then I activated the Windows smart screen. So now my screen has gone tinted yellow now. <laughs> oh boy. Open case. Take a uh, notebook. Take pen. Take, uh, yeah, I should really crop that out. Oh god, I can't crop it out. All right, let's first get to the pinch book. All right. Another thing I notice sometimes uh, when, because of the delay, when I talk or when I'm moving my character, uh, there's a delay on his head. You'll see his head go back a bit, and it looks like he's uh, kind of like headless. All right, so I made it on time because I can see the newspaper still there. So I'm not going to pick up the newspaper. Uh, this is my assigned position for my briefings. Good to know. open case I mean look let's do it like if, if I didn't if I was playing it for the first time so the briefing room contains a single podium and four okay you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna quit this I'm gonna go and uh, tweak DOSBox so that I can um, load it up in full screen but still in a window and uh, yeah uh, let's put let, I'll at least at least have it max screen so it won't look so terrible. Give me a second here. Bear with me as I try to rectify an otherwise em slightly embarrassing moment. All right, let's just go to uh, I'm using by the way Defend Reloaded, which is a front end for DOSBox, so it makes things easier. And let's change the res window resolution to max screen. Uh, okay. Oh gosh. Let's not do that resolution. Let's slightly bring it down. Uh, my monitor is actually 1920 by 1200, but I don't think I'll do that <laughs> for this. <laughs> It did. It, it looked kind of weird. Eh, I think I'm gonna have to do 1900 by 12, 1200. Actually, I needed to block certain things. All right. Uh, 
This is why you never do things on the fly during a live stream. There we go. Let's adjust it like so. There we go. All right. You're not the boss of me. I can look at anyone's pigeonholes as long as no one's looking. All right, let's try and see how this uh, works this time. Look, this is slightly larger than I expected. This is a lot larger than I expected. So, let's go back. I don't know about that. Um, live, doing things on, on a live stream can be a bit messy. Uh, so far, it looks okay. I mean, it can, I can see a bit of my Windows background desktop on the slight blue there which is I should probably fix that yeah yeah I don't think I can fix that oh there we go close enough all right around the hot so let's <clears throat> let's start over again let me take a swig of water oh. okay <clears throat> around the hallway is a keyboard a table holding radio extenders a photograph on the far wall and a barred window to the evidence room Take key. Take radio. Okay, I didn't check. Did the have the windows been popping up? Okay, I sure hope so. Oh, you will also be happy to know I did some research into what bits actually are, and I now know what they are. They are like tips. So thank you for the tip, Manitarius. And if Medicar was here, uh, thank you for his tip yesterday. <laughs> Just a tip. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Uh, anyways, look around. This is the Linen PD locker room. Uh, open locker. Take gun. Take bullets. Okay, it seems to be okay so far. This is going well. Take case. Open case. Take pen. Take notepad. Take pinch book. Close case. Close locker. Oh, can you have four this? No, I can't. <laughs> Close door. You know, I'm really surprised for something that I still remember. Oh, actually, I forgot to talk to uh, him oh ah use the next stall I'm giving birth to a sergeant in here <laughs> oh my cursor yeah it's a good cursor yay I better get that out of the way Moment of truth. Am I still in it? I'm still in it. Now let's look. The briefing room contains a single podium and four report writing tables. On the far wall are eight pigeonholes. On the front wall there is a blackboard. Look at blackboard. It's a regular blackboard, but Dooley keeps all his chalk and erasers locked up so you can't leave any cute messages. Nah. Look in hole. You look in Steve's pigeonhole and see a stack of subpoenas. Look in hole. Okay, that's also Steve. Oh, you check your pigeonhole and find a handwritten message. Sonny, how about 1198 at Carol's Caffeine Castle later in the ship? Steve, since you no longer need the message, you discard it. Your pigeonhole is empty. You look in Jack's pigeonhole and see a message that reads, I shot the last sucker that knows around in my pigeonhole. Well, he'll never know. Unless one of you s snitches on me. You know what they say. Snitches get stitches. Take paper. You pick up this morning's edition of the Linden Tribune. Well, seem to be a bunch of things happening. Namely, dope in the city. Uh, and also prison and Hickle. 
He's, uh, he was in Smugsville. But more importantly, there seems to be a drug problem in Lydon. Uh, and it's continued on to the right side. It's threatening the peace of the city. Uh, the sergeant said that it's now showing up in the streets in our schools. He has his ways. Sonny Barnes is... He's beyond mortal men. <laughs> he, can, he can get rid of garbage with just his mind. The homicide rate and, the pro and prostitution are a level the city has never seen. The Tribune has learned from a reliable source that a big-time drug dealer with the street name of De Death Angel may be responsible for the drug traffic. Uh, so... Another piece of news, Officer of the Year nominees. So Lyndon PD Chief Whipplestick has nominated Sonny Bonds and Joe Walters for L LPD Officer of the Year due to outstanding effort and commitment in crime prevention. And also, the Kingdom of Daventry is under siege by a renegade 300 headed dragon. Oh, geez, I wonder what will happen. One identified gnome has stated the kingdom's in a state of emergency. I think. Is he a doof? Or is he making Smugsville great again? <laughs> uh, the president, who has been a bird lover since childhood, rates mating the mating dance of the collar as a spectacular as the gold-crowned scum sucker. The president candidly admitted that he once that he once skipped the Geneva Arms Convention to watch so, some old collars mate. The president says a bill is presently before the Senate proclaiming National Collar Day. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice little plug. Oh, by the way, that's what you look like. You're Sonny Bonds on the right side. There you go. And, oh, yeah, put down paper. Put, put down paper. Okay, so the briefing's about to begin. It's about to start. Oh, you're going to go? Thanks for stopping by, Princess Rico. It was really good to talk to you. I hope you uh, come by later. This is your assigned position for briefings. I probably shouldn't have stood here because now I can't move. And there is additional dialogue from the other people that I... Especially from that female cop. She says some pretty uh, interesting stuff, if I recall. There's no music, which is kind of uh, a shame. I would like to have had some music in the game. Uh, so, oddly enough, I also have the same problem with the VGA version of Police Quest 1. The same dialogue issue. Anyways, Sergeant John Dooley briefs the 1300 shift, beginning with the latest hot sheet of stolen rides. Welcome back, men, says Sergeant John Dooley. I hope you enjoyed the long weekend. Now listen up, he barks. We're looking for a black 1983 Cadillac, license number LOP1238, VIN number CO3456218. Reported stolen last week. Try hard to find it so I can get that Malcolm Washington character off my back for a change. Dooley continues. Now hear this. Last night, three teenagers were arrested in three separate arrests, each for drunk driving. Two of the three were in possession of cocaine, and all three attended Jefferson High School. That should tell you something, boys and girls. Well, that's about it. That's about it for today. Watch your butts, kids. We don't want old Chief Whipplestick whining about our industrial injury stats going up again. Sonny Bonds, your call, call number will be 8332. Poor Dooley indeed. There we go. Let's go uh, talk to these people. I had two arrests last night. It's a shame both of them wanted to go the hard way. Oh, I missed her. Ah. Uh, You're going to have to hump, hump to catch me, boy. I wrote so many tickets while you were off duty, I wore down two pencils and ran a pen clear out of ink. Better write some tickets if you want to keep Dooley off your back. Probably going to have to do that. All right, let's head out of the briefing room. It sure clears out here quick. Well, sure clears out quick around here. 
All right. Um, there's a guy here for evidence, I believe. Yeah, Russ, the keeper of the evidence lockup, says, Howdy, Sonny. I haven't seen anything with your name on it come in lately. There's also a portrait. I believe that's Chief Whipplestick. This is the photograph of... Uh, the most recent photograph of Lydon's chief of police, Randolph Brownells Whipplestick, appointed to the department only 10 years ago. Old BN rapidly manipulated his way to the top. I believe this is a painting, I mean a painting, a picture of the court? I can't remember. A group photograph of the Lydon Superior Court Justices hanging the on the wall. So this room leads to, I believe, the computer room. Oh no, it leads to narcotics. Are you lost, uh, Sonny? Detective Laura Watts asks. The patrol cars are out in the yard. This is the narcotics bureau. I don't really belong there yet. Um, if I go in here, This is Captain Morgan's room, I believe. Oh, there he is. Hey there. How's it going? <laughs> Lieutenant Morgan says, Captain Morgan. They call him Captain or Lieutenant. I'm extremely busy right now. Besides, uniformed cops don't belong in narcotics division. Would you please hit the road and write some tickets? All right, I'm out of here. Now we exit the building, and here we are in the Lytton PD car parking lot. You'll see a bunch of patrol cars. Let's actually look. The parking lot holds three patrol cars, an unmarked car and a shiny clean Corvette. That Corvette is Sonny Bonds' Corvette, actually. So this bottom left car is your car, is your patrol car. And... Um, I'm pretty sure Manitarius knows this, but for those of you that don't, one of the things I learned is that uh, there are certain things you need to do before you even get into the car. Namely, you got to do an inspection. you got to walk from one corner of the car to the other. Ah, see? Having performed the prescribed walk-around safety check of your vehicle, you're now ready to hit the streets. If you didn't do this... Your car, you could drive the car, but then after a while, your car would get, would, would get a flat tire, and you'd be stuck. And it would be game over. Speaking of, let's save the game. Uh, on which disc do you want to save this as? I've never actually saved the game here, so I don't know what will happen. I really hope this works. Hope this works. Sure. Let's. Whoops. That's the wrong button. Well, wrong button again. Restore game. Okay, it does work. Great. So I can save the game. Awesome. Open door. Press F4 to get in the car. Uh, another thing I remember is that you look in the car. Car. You notice a nightstick. You see, you're going to need this nightstick soon. And I didn't know this for a long time until I was stuck and I was just searching and searching. I finally came across it. So, take nightstick. Okay. Close door. And let's save again. Alright. Now to leave, press F4. And now you're in the map. The map of Lydon. So, driving is done through your numeric keypad, and I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty bad at it. <laughs> so, but you drive pretty much like a regular car, kind of. It's kind of like when I was a kid, when I was playing this game, I felt like I was really driving a car. Um, so, yeah, you have to adhere to all the traffic rules. You can't go blowing through red lights. Uh, but yeah, you're pretty much a cop and you just uh, drive around. It gets pretty boring in a lull. You just uh, drive around, look at the... doing your beat. And um, 
Yeah, so... I always tried... Like, when I drove, I would see how the cars, like the, the computer, like the AI cars would drive. And I always try to drive exactly the same way. Like, I would try to do the diagonal turns to line up exactly on the same path they were going. And then uh, stop my car like them. Try to do it the same distance as other AI cars did it. And, I was, yeah, it was like, for me, this is like the closest I was ever going to get it to driving a car as a child. It was great. And for the most part, I really like driving in this game. Well, the only problem is when you'll see what happens. Um, I'm waiting, by the way, for the traffic light to turn green. <laughs> if you go through it, you'll it's a game over. So you got to adhere to the rules. There we go. Just driving along, not a care in the world. Oh, did I use the radio? Yep, I used the radio. <laughs> Dispatch squawks, 8332, 8332. Respond to 1183 southwest corner of Fig and Forth. All right. Uh, and now... Here's the part where everything goes to shit. Now I gotta run, cause I gotta do, I'm on like, I'm not like a cop. I got a emergency. So what do you do now? Is it F8? Okay, F8 is to go super fast. F F10 is to turn on your signals. And now you can blow through the radio, now you can blow through red lights, cause I'm a cop. You see, I'm, I'm needed. And this is where you could usually die pretty easily. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> oh, that's the police station. Oh, that was close! <laughs> nope, I've gone too far. Oops, wrong button. Uh. Radio dispatch. Right. That's what I want to do. Whoa. Whoa! There we go. I'm at the scene. Now, very carefully, move your car towards the scene. There you go. Upon your arrival at the scene of the accident, you observe a group of stand bystanders gawking at a green sedan that attempted to carve its own door into the side of a brick building. And they're at the scene, so... You key your radio, 8332, at the scene of traffic accident. The radio crackles, 8332, dispatch copies, 1097. Now let's press F4, and you're back, you're on the scene. And there is a traffic accident. Let's look. Being a highly trained observer, you immediately notice the smashed coop on the sidewalk and a crowd of rubberneckers milling around nearby. The crowd includes one particularly anxious young man. Look at car. There's a man slumped over the steering wheel. Look at man. You take a deep breath, look in the car, and see a male slumped motionless over the steering wheel. A closer re look reveals a bloody injury to the left side of his head and a gaping hole in his lower right jaw. Look at window. The broken glass of the driver window, driver's window has a strange pattern for a car wreck. It appears to be a bullet hole. Look in car. No pulse, no breathing, no vital signs. There is a bullet hole in the driver's window. This is not your normal everyday traffic accident. In your opinion, this man was murdered. Dun, dun, dun! Uh, 
don't think there's anything else I can do. The smoke seems to have cleared out. Look inside car. This man is beyond help. Okay. Look at... I don't think VIN works. You see nothing special. Okay. Open trunk. That is a job for the coroner. All right. Look at crowd. The crowd appears to be fixated on the wreck. Look at man in crowd. You see nothing special. Talk to man. Oops. Talk to man. An excited young man approaches you. Officer, he says, I saw, I saw what happened. I saw everything. I was buying a paper at the newsstand across the street when I heard a, the scream of tires, he tells you. I look down the street and here comes this car in a light in a light blue light model Cadillac racing down the street side by side. When they got closer, I heard a bang. I thought one of them had a blowout. But he, right after that, this car here lost control and crashed. The light blue caddy just kept on jamming. He finishes breathlessly. Talk to man again. All I know is, he says, says the witness, I think I saw part of his license plate number. L964. Alright. So I've done that. Use radio. You use a radio to advise dispatch of the apparent homicide. The car radio crackles a response. 10-4-83-32, we copy 187 PC homicide. Be advised, one homicide unit is en route, and the coroner's office has been notified. Continue investigation. You notify dispatch of the vehicle information. 10 we copy 187 PC homicide. Continue investigation. You notify dispatch of the vehicle information. You notify dispatch of the vehicle information. Dispatch is 83-32, be advised... Description of the suspect vehicle is a light model, light blue Cadillac. 104832, we copy light blue Cadillac partial license, L964. All right, I think that's everything. So, we'll just walk around here, continue. Look at building. Oh, wow. Look at hole. You assess the damage to the building. I think I've done my due diligence. Talk to crowd. Okay. There we go. Looks like it's Sergeant Dooley. Homicide Detective Oscar Hamilton arrives at Sergeant Dooley. Dooley tells you Bonds, Detective Hamilton will handle the investigation from here. Uh, that will be handled by the other, by uh, Homicide. Uh, Detective Hamilton will handle the investigation from here. Hit the streets and try to find the rat responsible, says Sergeant Dooley. I'll introduce the witness to Hamilton. All right. Let's talk to Hamilton. Oh. Son, duly reminds you. Okay, Sonny, move out. That's an order. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Holy crap. Let's save. Get in the car. Close door. And let's go. Everything's fine. And we're off. I have to wait for the turn signal to turn green. I don't think it can make a right turn on red either. I don't think the game will let me do that. Oh god, I gotta adjust the car a bit. Oh, they already cleared out the wreckage. That's pretty fast. Uh, let's just... Uh, I'm not gonna speed up. Ah, <sighs> waiting for someone to do something. Life of a cop. It's not easy.
But someone's got to do it. Oh, jeez. I sh actually, I actually know I'm supposed to come here next, but since I came here already before this sequence started, uh, I have to leave the screen. There we go. To the left, you'll see the the Hell Hotel Delifornia. Del Fenia? I forgot what the proper name of it is. Uh, that'll come up later in the game. Nope, there is nothing like it. Actually, I think it's called Carol's Caffeine Castle, if I recall correctly. Actually, can I look? I forgot. Can I look in here? This is a quiet residential area of Lydon. Okay, you can. Awesome. And I always wondered growing up when I played this game what kind of place this city was. It felt real to me. Like I was, um, I don't know, in my, in my mind it felt like this was real playing this as a kid. Like, oh wow, this is what real life must be like <laughs> as a cop being an adult. Right, let's look here. You're outside the beautiful Hotel Del Foria. There we go. Can I look here? Okay. Oh god! <laughs> nice job, Crash! That's one way to get a vacation. Ah, uh, shoot. I was hoping I wouldn't fall for it, but I did. Alright, let's load that up again. There's no reason to return the accident scene. You have your orders, now move. I wasn't returning! Let's actually speed up a bit. A bit. Oh gosh, okay. The Clearwater River borders the southern edge of this neighborhood. You're near the Lydon Courthouse in the city jail. I could blow by this using the sirens, but... I don't want to be one of those bad cops, those bad apples. You know what they say, a few bad apples. Also, growing up, I always thought, so on the left side is the court, of course, on the right side is the jail. So the red building is the jail, and the center next to it is like a pen. But I always thought that upper, this white building that's right below my car, I thought that was a basketball net. <laughs> look here. Cotton Cove is located here near the lovely Clearwater River. Uh, let's save here in case I crash again. Clearwater River borders the eastern edge of this residential area. Man, these lights do not turn anytime soon. 
All right. The blue room is in this part of town. Man, it's really quiet. I don't know what to talk about. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is one of those games that um, uh, pretty much changed my whole perspective on PC games. It was like, it opened my eyes, the potential of what I could po possibly play. Whoa, where am I? Ah, there we go. Steve Radios, 8332. This is 8331. Time for 1198 at Caffeine Castle. It's radio dispatch. Dispatch copies your car to car radio traffic. 8332. Be advised that 8331 is off the air at Carol's. Alright, so let's look here. The freeway leaves the city of Lydon here. Okay. Let's save since I've gotten the thing and let's speed up slightly. There we go. Let's go back to regular speed. There we go. Perfect landing. <laughs> Look around. This is the front entrance of Carol's Caffeine Castle and the lovely, in quotes, Wino Willie's Cocktail Lounge. Open door. Closed door. Look, this is your favorite coffee shop. Carol, the busy but friendly waitress, makes the strongest coffee in town. There is a menu on the left wall and a telephone on the far wall. The restroom is down the hall from the phone. Look at chalkboard. Oh, look at today's special. Oh gosh. How am I supposed to read this? Look at board. Dang it. You're now in the restroom. Use toilet. Panic fills your heart as you watch the nasty fluid nearly breach the rim before it slowly subsides. Wash hands. You soap up, rinse off, and dry your hands. You gotta be clean. Uh, four, six. Hi, Steve. Hello. <laughs> Talk. Steve says, boy, you earned your coffee after that mess. Talk to Steve. Hey, Sonny, it's good to see you. Carol sits your coffee down and says, Here you go, big boy. One caffeine IV. Drink coffee. You slam back the entire mug of Jamaican Java. Your eyeballs roll back in your head. Talk to Steve. All right, there's not much else to talk about with him. Oh. Carol yells at you from across the room. Officer Bonds, there's a Detective Hamilton on the phone for you. Let's go. Actually, pick up phone. Take phone. Oh gosh. How do you pick up the phone? Nope. Take. Uh. Pick up phone? Did I write that? You don't need it. 
Yes, but be yeah, definitely back before cell phones. Take phone. Say hello. There we go. <sighs> you take the phone and hear Bonds. This is Detective Hamilton. We identified the 187 victim in the car as Lonnie West, a local small-time drug dealer. Believe it or not, he's the second small-timer to get his ticket punched in the last two weeks. I just wanted you to know about the about West since you got you worked the scene. Gotta run. Don't got another call waiting. Don't spend the whole day drinking coffee. Bye. Click. Answer phone will probably work. Look at board. I know we could look at this. I could I could swear you could look at that. Look at specials. Look at wall. You look over Carol's blue plate specials du jour. Filet of hummingbird breast. Pigsty stew. Fried pork rind. Yum. Steve, as always, has so many things to talk about. It's quite... Uh... And also, as a kid, I got very hungry looking at those pictures of... Which I believe are cakes in the uh, cabinet. Uh, I always got hungry. And I always wondered what, he was ma what she was making there. Yeah, check special. I mean... Actually, would that work too? Check special. What's a special? No. Well, Steve says, well, guess it's time to get back to the business of crime fighting. All right. So I've done that. Let's save the game. Let's get up. And let's go. Bye, Steve. Bye. <laughs> You never made it this far as a kid, huh? I surprisingly got pretty far in the game as a child, even though um, I never finished it as a kid without having to use a guide. Um, there was just one scene that I could never get past. Closed door. F4. Alright. Dispatch. You key your radio. 8332. 1020 at Car Carol's Caffeine Castle. On the way. Let's save. We're just, uh, one of the big problems, again, uh, for streaming possibilities, there's a lot of dead time in this game, because uh, in between the times you got to wait for something to happen, there's nothing to do, and to make it worse, there's no music. So I might as well, like, either figure out something witty to talk about, or um, play some YouTube video music in the background, or something royalty free or something. I'm not really sure what to do in these cases. Uh, but I do know something's gonna happen um, fairly soon. It has to. I'm pretty sure what happens next is a traffic stop. I just need to find the right uh, area for it to happen. Uh, also gonna save again. Primarily because uh, I haven't crashed into anything yet. <laughs> Everything's okay. Neighborhood looks safe. I'm back at the hotel. Oh, maybe there's some possibilities with... Uh... I did, didn't I? I did. I thought I did. I thought I... I thought I radioed dispatch. Uh, I kind of got it to work. Not, but not really. Uh, hi, by the way. Hi there, Zam, by the way. <laughs> um, 
it's not working the way it's not working in game capture you cruise your beat just aching to write a ticket all right so here's the part where i think it might uh activate so let's watch that blue car nope nothing happened So instead of game capture, it did. I mean, it worked in game capture. The problem is that it, um, the dialog boxes weren't popping up properly. So right now I'm running this in display mode. Oh, there you go. Did you see that red sports car run that red light? There you go. Oh. <laughs> It's back to driving school for you, Sonny. Aw, oh, come on. That wasn't my fault. Alright. Restore game. Aww. <laughs> oh. I guess I have to wait for another instance to, for it to happen. That was not my fault. Hmm. But yeah, so right now I'm running this in a display... What is it? Display mode? So it's actually my entire desktop. But I've maximized uh, DOSBox so it pretty much covers the entire thing. Oh, there we go. Red light. There we go. Now I pulled it over. You activate your emergency lights and observe the sports car pull to the curb and stop. It's called radio dispatch. You key your radio. 8332. Run vehicle check on license O O H M Y M G. <laughs> You key your radio, 8332 suspect license, O-M-Y-M-G. Uh, the radio cackles, currently registered, no roll at once. Let's try that again, okay. Let's save, whoops, let's not restore save. Let's get out, oops, wrong button. Dispatch. This is Earth 332. Run once on Ocean Henry Mary Yellow Mary Char George. All right. Dispatch returns with the information you requested. Oh my MG is currently registered to Helen Hots. No wants. Look. Well, well. Just what every poor little rich girl needs a little red sports car. You should look at her before you talk to her. Look at woman. Thanks for not giving me a ticket, officer. Wait, what? Talk to woman. What? What? Give ticket? What do you mean? Thanks for not giving me a ticket, officer. What the hell? Arr. No. Have I failed it? Oh, no. I think because I left the scene, I lost. There we go. As you look into the car, you wonder, can this be happening? The young lady has a smile that can melt the polar ice caps. Beautiful flashing eyes, gorgeous hair, 
and her unbuttoned blouse makes it obvious she has nothing to hide. In a soft, seductive voice, she murmurs, Why, officer? I'm just sure I didn't do anything wrong. Hello. <laughs> My name is Helen. Helen Hotz. She says as heat detectors go off for miles around. What's yours, handsome? Uh, ask for license. Oops. Helen Hotz. Female, 5'2", 105, hair's black, eyes blue. Alright, no restrictions. Being the veteran you are, you overcome temptation and stare the young lady straight in the eyes. May I please see your driver's license, ma'am? She's hopping mad as she yells, Oh, you cops are all alike. All you care about is making your quotas. Well, come on, snap it up. I'm in a hurry, big shot traffic cop. Guys like you make me want a big dip of snuff. You never give a decent girl a break. You just hassle people. Right ticket. You f carefully fill in all the necessary information on the citation. She's hopping mad as she yells, Okay, she's already said this. Ask her to sign ticket. I think I have to do that. Or return license. Ask her to sign ticket. You hand your, the ticket book and the, your pen. Please sign at the X, ma'am, you politely instruct her. She hands her ticket book back and suggests with a sarcastic smile, Why don't you shove that pen where the sun don't shine, officer? Mommy and daddy, really. If ticket. She verbally pounds you again. Officer, did your mother have any children that lived? Have a nice day. Get lost, jerk. <laughs> Close door. And we're off. We've issued her ticket. Let's save. And enraged, the young woman shrieks as you drive off. Your mama wears army boots, you sh well, you blah 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 head. And there goes our first traffic violation. Now, I kind of forgot what happens next. I don't remember what I'm supposed to, what happens. So this would be kind of cool to uh, witness it, I guess. Hi there, Plaster Mouse. Welcome to the channel. Green light. No! <laughs> I had right away, you asshole. It was right of way for me. I had right of way. You shouldn't have turned left. What do you mean it's back to driving school for me? Stupid, stupid game. You're not right. I'm right. God damn it. <laughs> oh. All right, back to the restore the game. That was not my fault. I had right away. I was going straight in that intersection. He was turning left. He had to wait for me to pass. What? I call shenanigans, absolute shenanigans on that. Oh well, it's it's a good thing I saved before I 
before I committed too much into that. I would totally issue him a ticket if I didn't die. Here's the thing, though. When you go, like, at the slowest speed, like, it's like 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, or, like, mile. I don't know. It's pretty slow. It's just that, I don't know, considering the speed of these cars, it doesn't feel like you should be dead. It should just be, oh, you're in an accident. Man, now that I think about it, I haven't really played very many Sierra titles. Like, uh, I've played, like, Police Quest 1 more uh, quite a bit, the first one. I finished the VGA one. I've n only played maybe, like, five minutes of Police Quest 2. I've never really gotten far in Police Quest 3 because I couldn't get the driving mechanic down. Uh, Police Quest 4 had a bug, so I was never able to finish it. And... Um, the Space Quest games and the... I mean, I think I've played more of the King's Quest series. And even then, that wasn't very much. So I really need to start playing through those. The only problem is they're very difficult to figure out solution-wise for me. I find that more so than, like, say, modern point-and-click adventures. I find that the classic Sierra titles and LucasArts titles are hard for me to grasp the solutions. Um, and figure out what I'm supposed to do. Anyways, ah, oh, dispatch return squawks. 8332, 8332, respond to a complaint at Carol's Caffeine Castle. Uh, alright. Let's save. And let's go a bit faster. No, they don't. A lot of puzzles for, um... Oh. Oops, not restart. Uh, escape to continue. Oops, wrong button again. I just wanted to speed up a bit. There we go. Let's save here. Yeah. Uh. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, crap. Let's restart. <laughs> I'm glad I did saved before I made that turn. So I have played. Um, I've actually. I think my most successful, like, series. Acting out. Think about it. Is the. Um, <laughs> Leisure suit Larry. I think I've been in land land of the lounge wiz lizards twice uh but not any of the other games king's quest i've never beaten it i've watched some let's plays uh space quest no nothing and police quest i've beaten one vga and ega but not two three four and certainly none of the swat series all right look around Alright, look at bikes. Parked in front of Carol's are four bad news motorcycles. Open door. Close door. Let's save. Oops. <laughs> Just wanted to... Whoops. Uh, I'll just ignore that. Talk to Carol. Carol is obviously upset if she blurts out in a low t loud tone of voice, Oh, Sonny, those drunken bikers in the bar next door are taking up all the parking places in front of my cafe. They just have no consideration for others. Where are my customers going to park? Would you ask them to move their motorcycles, please? Great. Another chapter in your life of big-time crime stopping. Parking space hogging. 
All right, so it looks like I got to go to Wino Willies and deal with this. Actually, let me do one quick edit to the chat box because it seems to be being a, it's being obscured by the uh, whoa that's wrong. Let's get the chat box up and move that down here. Since more often than that, that looks like to be a half decent area to have it located. All right. Uh, Let's move this around, fix that up. There. That looks better. All right, back to the game. As he heads for the back room, the bartender mumbles under his breath, here comes trouble. Look. Lots of blood, sweat, and tears and other things have been deposited in Wino Willies. Let's save. Look at bikers. Oh. Look at men. These are some pretty rough looking dudes. Look at woman. You see nothing special. Oh. Okay. Uh, hmm. Part of the uh, thing is showing on the. Ugh, I gotta adjust that again. What's the problem using display capture to get even a little bit? Okay, it looks better now. All right. Talk to man. The animal in the leather, black leather jacket says, Hey pal, I'm the leader around here. You want to talk? Come over here and talk to me. Who am I supposed to talk with? Oh. The leader of this bunch comes over and to you and says, Well, well, if it ain't the tidy bowl man. What the fuck do you want, pig? Talk to man. The animal in the black leather jacket says, We don't talk to no pigs. Please leave. Oh god. Talk to man. Talk to leader. Oh my god. Lose something, son? Oh boy. Look at man. I can't use biker, right? Use nightstick. Why hurt these presumably innocent people? That's what you're actually supposed to do. You're supposed to use the nightstick. But I used it prematurely. Um, ask men to leave. Oh boy. Hmm. What am I supposed to say to initiate? Talk. Hello. Talk to people. Hello. <laughs> Look at leader. Look. Look at man. Talk to dude? Talk to animal. Oh my god. What's the sequence here? Um. Whoa. Pressing the wrong button. Uh, what's my inventory here? Uh, take ticket. Issue ticket. Give ticket, write tickets? <laughs> for what for, man? We ain't done nothing wrong. Give ticket. Ask to leave. Tell men to leave.
Actually, I'm kind of curious. Do you actually do, can you get killed if they throw that dart in your face? I'm kind of curious. Stop the man from picking it up. Ha ha! Punch, man. Ah oh, man. All right. What am I supposed to do? Talk to man doesn't work. This is the problem with... God, how did I do this as a kid? Fuck you. My, what a filthy mind you have. Oh. Look around. Please leave. Leave Wino. Just do that yourself. Okay. Uh, move bikes. How do you plan to make us move our bikes, wimp? Okay, there we go. Use night stick. Say good night, pig. We're gonna kick the shit out of you. There you go. You remove your PR24 and take a defensive stance. The head biker quickly backs off, backs down, saying, "Excuse us, sir. If you're gonna be rough with us, we'll just leave quietly." I've gotten beaten up so many times in this, um, but I don't know how I figured it out as a kid to use the night stick. I think I found it by accident. Or, I, I mean, no, no, I was like desperate trying to figure out what I could use. I was looking in, then I went in the car and I looked in the car and I found the nightstick. And I solved it. Come on, guys, let's blow this joint. And there they go. The local, local working girl seated at the bar seems to know you. She hops from the stool and shouts, Sonny Bonds, is that you? My hero, boy, am I glad you showed up. Those guys had some pretty strange ideas. Look at woman. You recognize Sweet Cheeks Marie as an old chum from high school. She obviously failed stewardess school. Talk to Marie. What's cooking, good looking? asks your old friend Sweet Cheeks Marie. It's been too long, Sonny. I haven't seen you around lately. I just know you want something. Uh, talk to Marie. Ask about life. No. Ask Marie about drugs? This music is a little annoying. By the way, Sam, if you're still if you're there, I have not played Iceman, uh, co codename Iceman, right? I haven't played it, but I heard it's it is a hard game. <laughs> um, Ask Marie about Death Angel? Ask Marie for information? I just know you want something. Look at Marie. Um, no. I think I'm going to leave. Talk to Marie. I know you, I just know you want something. What is she? Give Marie money. Sweet Cheeks, eyes bright. Oh, Sonny, you know I just love that, but I'm meeting someone in a few minutes. Oh. 
Didn't I ask that? Ask about drugs. Oops. Oops. Obviously you have come to the right place. Sweet Cheeks Marie spills her guts to you. You know what I heard the other day, says Marie? There was a big dope man trying to take over Lydon. He likes to call himself the Death Angel. I don't know who know more about him, but this John was sure a peculiar duck. I only seen him once, and I'm not sure about his name. I think it was Kaufman or Hoffman or something like that. He's a real spiffy dresser, but the funniest thing, the guy has a sweet has a sweet little flower tattoo above his left nipple. It was kinda cute really. That's the only real news in town, sweet thing. Now return for the information on the Death Angel. You tell Sweet Cheeks of the upcoming undercover crackdown of prostitution called Operation Trick Trap. Talk to Marie. Okay, I guess we're done. So long, Mer sweetie, says Sweet Cheeks Marie. Come see me sometime when we can spend more time, darling. Radio, radio, computer radio, dispatch, 8332, complaint resolved. Oh, I need some water. Uh, I don't think Marie, I don't think Cat Carol cares if they're gone now. I mean, I might as well tell her. I don't think she cares. saved close door let's go to the game world and let's save again it's getting starting to get a little late so I'm gonna stream for about 15 more minutes or so and then I'll call it a stream hopefully I can get the next sequence of events to occur before that But it's been fun. I played some more of um, Marathon. I mean, I didn't get as far as I'd like into it. Uh, but I'm now playing this. I'm probably going to go back to Marathon next stream session. Just because I have been playing that a lot. So I kind of want to finish it. But I'll definitely come back to this later. Um, I also need to go back to Albion. That's also a game I need to play through. That is not a fun game. I mean, it is fun. It's just, it's, a, uh, it's tough. Uh, yeah, I, Albion, by the way, is an RPG. It's a very, um, uh, it's an RPG that's ahead of its time. All right. Oh, speaking of, um, now that I'm an affiliate, I need to... You observe an erratically driven vehicle and feel the driver may have had one too many. Uh, which one? Oh, that one. There we go. You've never heard of Please Quest. He slowly pulls to the cur right, jumps the curb, and comes to a stop. Let's save. You key your radio. 8332. Run vehicle check on license. PRG. Oh, programmer one. <laughs> uh, Plaster Mess, you haven't heard of Police Quest? I'm really surprised. It's one of those... Uh, it's a classic Sierra title, along with... Uh, same vein as King's Quest and Space Quest, uh, but in this case you play the role of a police officer for the first four games. And the, those first three games actually in the series uh, 
takes place in this city, Lydon. The fourth game takes place in L.A. Uh, but yeah, 83-32, suspect license, programmer one. Your radio crackles. 83-32, personalized plate, programmer one, appears to be currently registered. Uh, let's F for it. It's a good game. It is a very good game. The only problem is, is that it can be a little obtuse trying to figure out some of the ant puzzles, but it's not it's not too bad compared to say some of the others I've heard about in the other series like Space Quest. And especially like I've heard some Monkey Island or Maniac Mansion, like LucasArts solutions are pretty out there. Closed door. Look. It looks like a possible DUI. Look at car. Okay. Uh. Dispatch returns. Programmer 1 is clear with valid local registration and the name of Art Serbian. Record check shows, shows two prior DUI convictions. Okay. You cautiously approach the vehicle and observe one male seated behind the window. Rolling down his window appears to be quite a challenge to him. Look at man. You look at into the glassy, watery eyes of a middle-aged man. He is certainly feeling no pain. Talk to man. You hear a tiny voice that sounds like Tiny Tim singing through a mouthful of crackers. I didn't do no shit wrong, off for sure. Ask for license. The mom, man fumbles with his light wallet. My license? Uh, yeah, it's uh, right. Here it is. Art Serbian. 5'8", hair none, eyes blue. Restriction. My, does he not look a lot like a programmer from Sierra? <laughs> Talk. Since the information on the driver's license matches the subject, you return his license to him. Talk to man. Okay. Uh, ask if he has been drinking. Oh. Perform test. Ask man to step out of car. Ask man to get out of car. Oh god. Get out of car. The gentleman responds to your request. Die, uh, yes, sure. Form test. You correctly administer the field sobriety test and are amused as your subject gives us a best imitation of a young swan attempting his first takeoff. Arrest man. Re reluctantly he says, oh, okay, where are we going? So as to not excite him, you say, oh, we're just going to take a little ride to see some friends of yours. It's okay, buddy, come on. Okay. So I'm going to save here. Um, uh, because I want to show you what happens when you do something wrong. I should have shown it to you, uh, shown, shown you the, the previous stop, what happens when you get it wrong. Um, but here I'll do this wrong. So put handcuffs on oh man. The drunk begs you, could you cuff me in front, please? I'm not feeling so good. Cuff man in front. You think, he sure, he doesn't look dangerous. Sure, why not? You place your subject under arrest for the violation of Linden City Dri Vehicle Code, VC 23502, driving while under the influence. Open door. You just fell victim to an old trick. There are two rules to remember. Always follow procedure and never trust a drunk. So he beat the shit out of me and he killed me. 
Thanks for playing Please Quest. Next time, don't make this mistake again. Let's restore the game. Okay. Place cuffs. Oh man. Uh, I'm back. I'm back of me? Oh god. Oh, he turns around. No. Not wanting to take a chance, you explain. I'm sorry, sir, but department policy dictates all custody arrests shall be restricted by proper handcuffing procedure, and that means behind your back. You place your subject under arrest for the violation of Lytton City Code, dr vehicle code, okay, driving under the influence. And now he's arrested behind his back. Open door. Close door. Open door. There we go. Oops. Whoops. Okay, where am I? Oh, there I am. Don't worry, it'll be told somewhere at your expense. Whoa. Let's save. Your key or radio, 8332, one in custody, en route to jail. So I'm going to speed up a bit and take him to jail. Gotta follow the rules. Alright. Now I'm gonna wait for this... Okay, there you go. Alright, and right across from the jailhouse is the courthouse. But we don't need to go there just yet. Alright, here we are. See... I always wondered, I always assumed you won't be going in or too Okay, I can't leave. So I always assumed that tower there was actually the basketball court. So let's look. This is the officer's booking entrance to the Lytton City Jail. In the exercise yard, a prisoner dribbles his ball continuously. He also bounce, dribbles continuously. He also bounces his basketball. Close, open door. Close door. Open door. Ask man to get out. There we go. See if you can walk up there without falling down, you ordered the drunk. Closed door. Hick! What you mean, officer? I can walk like this even when I'm sober. <laughs> Watch your step, Art. We don't want you falling down the stairs. Hick, says Art. Look at locker. These lockers are used to store officers' weapons while they're inside the jail on business. Open locker. Put gun in locker. Close locker. Look at man. He seems to be tireless. His stamina is only equaled by his sentence. From past encounters, you know his nickname is Slam Dunk Donnie. Talk to Donnie. Wait. Press 
button. You push the buzzer. The electron the jailer releases the electronic lock. Follow me, you order your prisoner. The jailer greets you with her friendly Oh no, here comes more paperwork. The jailer says, What can I do for you, hot pencil? Uh DUI. You remove the inventory and prisoner's personal property, then hand it to the jailer with the booking slip. The jailer promptly takes the prisoner's property, then says, Okay, Monty, remove this gentleman's cuffs and place him before behind door number one. Take cuffs. Remove your cuffs and place them in your handcuff case. Woo, boy, that feels good, says the drunk. Those cuffs were so tight I thought my hands had fallen off. If he throws up on the floor, the jailer laughs. You're going to clean it up, Bonds. Gee, thanks, Charlotte, officer, says the drunk. I'm so happy I could just shh. Talk to men. Hello. Oh. Well, 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 shouts the prisoner. If it ain't a wimp in Klopp's clothing. Punch man. How can you do that? Oh. Well, that's the DUI booked. Laura enters the jail and says, Hey, Sonny, I need to speak with you for a moment. A position has opened in the narcotics division, and according to Lieutenant Morgan, it will be filled by a veteran street cop. If you're interested, submit a memo to Lieutenant Morgan as soon as possible. It would be a great chance for you to get out of that uniform for a while. Just as Laura leaves, the jailer, jailer yells at you. The jailer yells, Hey, Hot Pencil, come over here. I just hung up from talking to Dooley, and is he hot? The jailer continues. He wants you back at the office on the double. All right. I guess I'll head back to the office and then call it there. Open locker. Take gun. Close locker. I also forgot to do the most important thing. Put bullets in gun. You rip out your speed loader and load your weapon. There you go. I got four points for that. <laughs> Open door. Close. Close door. Uh, let's save. And let's go. Oh, gosh. Whoa, that was close. Let's drive up a bit faster. I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. There's the... Uh, there's the parking lot. There we go. Open door. Closed door. The PR-24 must remain in the vehicle. Ugh. Open door. Put night stick in car. Okay, close door. Oops, open door. Close door. Let's just a bit faster. Okay, since I'm here, let's go back to normal speed. Look at table. Oops. 
On the table is a basket marked in. This is where you submit your reports and memos. Next to the basket is a blank, a pad of blank memos. Write memo. You write out a request for transfer to the narcotics division. Put memo in basket. You place your request into the in basket. There you go. If that gremlin keeps messing with me, says Sergeant Dooley, I'm going to have to notify Internal Affairs to start an investigation. When I find out who that little weasel is, says Sergeant Dooley, you better believe that he or she will be walking a footbeat from the river all the way to Joe's junkyard. Hey, Sonny, Dooley says he's going to start a inter big Internal invest Affairs investigation just because some fool put a stinking smelly bird in his desk. Sonny, you should have seen Sergeant Julian when he first discovered that chicken. He threw a screaming fit and wanted the lieutenant to dust for prints. What chicken? Open door. <laughs> you can hardly believe your eyes. A full-grown chicken with its legs tied together is flapping about and clucking raucously right on Sergeant Julian's desk. Feathers fly everywhere. But that's not the worst, unfortunately. The chicken has lost control of her bodily functions. The mysterious gremlin has struck Sergeant Dooley again. Sonny, if I find that you are that inconsiderate worthless gremlin, I'll hang you out to dry. Talk to Dooley. Dooley shouts, I swear, if I catch that gremlin, whoever he is, I'm going to make hamburger out of him. And as this chicken continues to slowly throw feathers all over the ground, I shall save here. Uh, chicken. And I shall call it a session. Uh, it's been fun. It was a very low-key session compared to uh, others, but regardless, I really enjoyed my time. I'm going to now look and see if there's anyone streaming anything on the Twitch Retro channel as always. And let's take a quick look and see what's going on here. playing Mind and Magic 1. Somebody's playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. There we go. I've never played Roller Coaster Tycoon myself. So, that'll be fun for a lot of you who might be interested in watching that. You have a good night as well, uh, Manitarius. And, uh, yeah. Uh, this is Jessica Leska, and she is currently streaming uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. So it should be a fun time. Uh, thank you again to all of you for watching. And um, I will hopefully be able to stream again tomorrow. Uh, until then, though, have a good night. And also hopefully get, some emo uh, get an emoticon fix. Until then, bye.